I talk a lot about making wow factor cards by ensuring that you have a dark contrast and bright colors that really pop, but how do you make that happen? So I'm going to show you a really quick and easy technique for picking your colors and guaranteeing that they're going to show up with a dark background. It's actually a bit of a, a trick here and I'm going to be using the Magnolia Halftone Stamp and Die Set because this has just come back into stock for the third time. It flies off the shelves really quickly so I thought I'd definitely get a tutorial in this weekend for you. So if you've been waiting for this, check out the link in the description below to go and purchase yours before it goes out again because I can't promise that they're always going to keep restocking it. So I'm going to start with the stamp and I'm going to just stamp this directly onto my card base. Now usually I will stamp or I will watercolour onto uh, a separate panel and then place that onto my card base afterwards. But not today. I'm going to save some cardstock by doing it this way. So I'm going to choose my composition, which I think will be something like that. I'm not going to use the entire stamp. This is, as I say, a half tone stamp. What that means is that you have shading and contrast within this stamp surface. It's not a solid stamp. So you're going to get this beautiful kind of watercolor look from it uh, just with one impression so there's a couple of different ways you can use these as well let me just pick this up now because it's a big stamp I always like to position it roughly and then I keep part of it in place and I just roll it back down ensuring that every element of that stamp is on the surface of the platform because it's large it can uh, occasionally get air bubbles underneath so I just like to make sure that that's not going to happen here. Then I'm going to pick my colours and I've got Twisted Citron, Picked Raspberry and Festive Berries. So the Twisted Citron, first of all, I'm going to put uh, where the stems are. So I'm going to use a stencil brush for this. And I'm not going to be specific, but I am going to just dab with the stencil brush here. And the stencil brushes are back in stock as well. Uh, these are available at Craft Stash. They come in a set of, it's either 10 or 12, um, and there is a stand that you can purchase for them. I think it's brilliant as well. That comes with for blending brushes. Again, everything I'll link down below. Now I've got the green on there, and I'm using Distress Oxides, but you can do this also with inks. So like I say, just touching up the green areas, making sure that they are still green, if there's any pink or red that has got on them because the ink pads are so big it's really hard to get in the detail if you've got the minis with the inks um, the little inch inches then they're really good ink pads to use for this so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my uh, water this isn't essential but I really love the effect when I do this so I'm going to take a spray bottle of water and I'm just going to lightly mist the surface and then I'm going to press this down onto my card base now, as I'm pressing this down, I can see that the ink is kind of um, it's kind of moving around because of the water, which is what I want. Now, open that up, have a look. Look at that. How beautiful is that? So, let's just make sure every area is covered. Now with these stamps you do have miss spots and they are purposeful so don't worry your stamp is not damaged or anything like that you've actually got areas like here that are highlights so they are white these are going to pop amazingly against that black background when we come to put that on so clean this all up and then let's start working on the black background now I've got myself my black cardstock and usually I would have cut this to size ready but if I cut this to size and I place that on there and I then take the coordinating die I don't know whereabouts I need to cut into this sheet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut into this anyway and then I'm going to cut this out where I need it on my card base. So let's just tab this down with a little bit of low tack tape. Now I'm going to cut this down to size so that the paper and the die will fit through my um, die cutting machine. I've got the smaller sort of A5 size plate one, um, but I want to make sure that I'm not cutting this too small. So just taking a look at the edge here, I've got around about just over half an inch from this large flower. So make sure I don't cut that any smaller there. Now I can cut this directly down this side of the die because I'm taking off this side of the flower anyway. That should now be slim enough to go through my machine. So now I'm going to release the die carefully 
just make sure you do it somewhere where you're keeping hold of all the little bits that fall out as well because potentially depending on which die you're using you might need some of these a little bit later on so just carefully lifting out like so we've also got the flower there that the tape has stuck to that's fine for now so i'm going to remove the flower and i'll keep this for another project i don't need this flower for this project but as you can see it's a beautiful beautiful outline die it's absolutely gorgeous you pop all those pieces out that is stunning to you so a lot of fine detail there so i can now roughly position this back over the top of that design and as you can see that fits beautifully i am going to cut an outline for this but you don't have to you can leave it like that so i'm going to take some wet glue and i'm just going to apply wet glue to the outline just the very outside of the design and the edges of the card. There we go, so the main piece has been stuck down. I'll just do these corner pieces as well. And this is why I said you need to ensure that you keep any bits that fall out because you will have some pieces on the edge that won't be part of the main design, the, the big part. And once that's all dried, we can turn this over and we can snip this to the size of the card base. Look how much that pops on the black so far already, but we've still got more that we can do to enhance this. I'm actually going to add a beautiful gold, metallic gold outline around it. Using the die again, I'm going to cut from some gold mirror card. So I've now cut the outline from gold mirror card and I've put dots of wet glue using the uh, Creative Craft Products bookbinding glue all around the outside. And this will slot beautifully in to the die cut that we made before because of course we did it with the same die but that was just that we took the waste from the black cardstock this time we're using the actual design so just place it in all the way around so how stunning is that looking i'm just going to pop a sentiment here i think i'm going to put this at the top in the middle and that's just from my sentiments for all paper pack where you can cut out lots of different sentiments in different colors black and white and then I'm just going to scatter a few small dew drops around these are just like glass curls They're absolutely beautiful and they really finish off any project now of course my uh, glue at the moment is white but that will dry clear so let's just do this and take a look at the card completed so there's a really quick and easy way of creating a pop of colour on a black background, a black card base, if that's what you want. So with this, at least I haven't had to paper piece all the elements back in because of those petals with those leaves, that would take me a long, long time. So just to remind you, I have used the Textures uh, Mar uh, Magnolia Halftone Stamp and Die Set here. This is now back in stock, finally, after months of waiting. Uh, this is the third restock. I don't know if there'll be another. You'll find the link down for this below and I'll pop a link here as well. Thank you everybody for watching. Please do subscribe if you love this and I'll speak to you again very soon. Take care.